Danganronpa 1 and 2 Reload, released in March 2017 on the PS4, well at least over here in the UK. It's a re-release of the first two games in the Danganronpa series that were originally on the PlayStation Vita. It has updated graphics and extra features. Danganronpa is a series of murder mystery visual novel games that is held in a high regard by many people and receives pretty positive reviews from a lot of game sites out there. And there's a reason for that, they are very well written with a story that really sucks you in and makes you want to see the rest of the story and find out what's going on. After hearing so much positive stuff about the series, I really wanted to give the series a try even though I'm not generally a fan of visual novel games, and I'm glad I did because I've had a great time with these two games. Before we get into the meat of this review, I just want to warn everyone who hasn't played the games yet that I will be using footage from the first case in both games, so there might be minor spoilers in the gameplay footage, but I'll try my best to keep it to a minimum. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. The first game on this disc starts with your main character Makoto being accepted into Hope's Peak Academy, a school for what this game calls ultimates in specific fields. You can only get in if you're scouted by the school and they see you as what they call an ultimate. Your character Makoto is only getting in as the ultimate lucky student because he won a lottery draw they had. But things aren't quite as they seem when he turns up for his first day of school, as when he enters the school he passes out and awakens to find him and 14 other students have been trapped in the school with no way out. The villain Monokuma, a black and white bear, tells you that you're going to be trapped there for the rest of your lives, and if you break any of his rules you'll be put to death. But he tells you if someone can successfully kill another student without anyone figuring it out in a courtroom setting, they can go free. But if the killer is found out, out, they will be put to death, and if the killer tricks everyone, they will be set free and everyone else will be executed. Obviously all the kids aren't really that into the idea of killing each other, so as the game goes on, Monokuma sets up different motives for them to kill each other, and that keeps the plot rolling. Now with that setup out of the way, the gameplay of Danganronpa consists of three main parts. One, walking around the school with the other captives, trying to figure out what's going on and watching the plot unfold like you would in any visual novel. Two, investigating the various murders that take place with you gathering evidence and interviewing witnesses for their accounts. 3. The class trials, where you use all your evidence and information to find out who the killer is. Before each murder you get a few days of plot build up in which you're generally going to be shepherded around the game, with the game taking you where you need to go. But you do get a few slots of free time where you can in a very persona style way get to know the different characters better. At the end of hanging out with the game's cast you can give them different gifts to make them like you better. Every character has gifts they like and dislike. You get new gifts for people for a random capsule machine in the school shop. It works much like Smash Bros Melee's trophies. Every time you get a new gift you haven't already got, the chances of getting something new goes down and you can put the odds in your favour by putting more cash down. This machine is the only thing you use money on in the game. You earn money by beating trials and looking at stuff you haven't looked at before. When you've got someone to like you a bit more, you get a little conversation with them that generally gives you some more insight into their character, and you always get a bonus for using the trials of the game that we will get into later. After these brief calm periods, there'll eventually be a murder that you and the anime Scooby gang will have to solve. Every investigation involves checking the crime scene and the body and talking to witnesses if there's any. But there really isn't that much stress to these parts as you can't move on until you've gathered every last clue you need for the trial, so there's really no no failing here. All the murders in the game have some great setups and plenty of twists and turns that will keep you guessing right up till the end of the trial. Now we move on to the trials themselves. These are always the way you end the chapter. Before the trial begins you can equip special abilities you've gained from making friends with the cast. And then it's off to the trial. Judge Monokuma is always presiding over proceedings and you've got to prove to everyone who the killer is and at the end of the trial everyone votes for who they think did it. The trials are basically a set of mini games that you have to work your way through. They don't always come in the same order but you'll always at least have to do one of each of them. There's the argument section where you've got to use evidence to refute what lies or misinformation people in the courtroom have. There's multiple different keywords that you can attack, and it's your job to figure out what you need to say to move the case along. And then there's sections where you'll be given a list of all your evidence and you have to figure out which bit of evidence you need to use. Also there's the hangman's gambit, which is pretty much just hangman, but you're trying to spell a word that will help with the case. And the final thing you have to deal with is a rhythm game-like section where you have to time button presses to destroy the arguments on the screen. As you go through the trial, you also have a health meter that you have have to worry about, but there isn't much consequence for dying, you just get a worse score. When the trial ends, the score only determines how many coins you're going to get for presents. The story in this game is great and has plenty of twists and turns and without spoiling anything, it ends quite satisfyingly. All the different characters are all quite well written and are mostly all pretty goddamn insane. And thankfully it doesn't go into fan service anime territory too often. Sure there is a few moments here and there but it's not too much. I'm only a casual anime fan and I found a lot to enjoy in this game and it really surprised me at how long the game was. I got a good 20 hours or so out of it and I really enjoyed every second of it. And there's even a game mode you unlock after beating the game where it basically turns the game into a dating simulator with a little management game thrown in. It's good in its own way, it's a good way to complete all the characters' storylines because you sure as hell ain't going to get a chance in the main mode where they start dropping like flies. After devouring the first game in a few days I was ready for the sequel which is also on this disc, Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair. 
I'm not going to go into as much detail in this game because much of the gameplay remains the same, I'll just talk about the changes and my general feelings on the game. Danganronpa 2 starts off basically the same as the first game with your main character being selected to join Hope's Peak Academy, but you along with 14 other students wake up on a deserted island called Jabberwock Island. Instead of Monokuma you have Yusami, a bunny thing that wants you to make friends and get along with all the other people on the island. But as you might guess, that doesn't last long and Monokuma turns up and takes over the proceedings with his giant mechs. And like the first game, he's going to get you to all murder each other and then solve the murders. Apparently this game takes place after the events of the first game and there is some hints here and there. Apart from it being set on an island and not a school, there's not much difference in the gameplay, except instead of walking around in a first person view all the time you have a 2D avatar that runs around on a 2D plane sometimes, but you get the usual first person view when you go into the game's different buildings and areas. There's also the addition of a Tamagotchi-like e-pet that levels up and evolves as you take steps in the game and it also poops a lot so keep an eye on that. You gain more Monokuma coins by evolving the E-Pet, but other than that it doesn't really do much, it's just a fun little side thing. You also have a level meter at the top right of the screen that fills up with experience as you walk around and do things, but it just gives you more skill points for the abilities and the trials. And like in the first game, you'll need all the Monokuma coins you can get as you've got gifts to collect again. The gacha machine is still the main way to get gifts, but there's also now a vending machine in the supermarket of the game, where you can actually choose the gifts you get, but there's a limited selection and it costs quite a bit of coin. This time out, instead of just getting random coins when you look at stuff, you have to find hidden Monokuma dolls hidden around the map. This time out, I felt the crop of characters were a bit, well, honestly, a bit lacking when compared to the characters of the first game. They all feel very tropey. You've got the pervert guy, the sleepy girl, the ditzy girl that's scared of her own shadow, the girl who likes to eat her own body weight and food but isn't fat. And Jesus Christ, don't get me started on the anime fan service bullshit that's going on way more than it has to. It was very cringy, but what do I expect? I'm playing an anime game. But I mean, there wasn't that much cringe in the first one. Oh well. And while we're on the subject of anime fan service, do all of these supposedly teenage girls have breast implants? I mean, Jesus, even the fat pervert boy has a nice set on him. I know the first had Hina, but hers are normal compared to these ones but it's not big enough of a deal to detract from what's another fun game in the series. And I did think Ibuki, Suda, Chiaka and Sonya were pretty cool characters though. I probably butchered those names. There's also been a few changes to the trial section of the game with new mini games and additions to the old mini games. There's now more truth bullet answers to deal with that makes figuring out that keyword you need to shoot at that much harder. I've got to admit I got stuck a lot more than in the first game because a lot of the time a bullet will be someone's witness account and I couldn't for the life of me remember what their account was or what name was what person which was frustrating, but I have a shit memory, so that's probably on me more than anything. Instead of just having to look for keywords you need to refute, you now also have blue keywords to worry about. These blue words are statements that you can agree with to move the trial on, and it definitely made me think a lot harder. And that's not the only bit that's been changed. The Hangman's Gambit from the first game has now been made a bit more challenging. There's different letters going around the screen, and you have to shoot two of the same letter together to get them to stop, and mix into a bigger letter that you can shoot again to either destroy it or try and put it on the word board. And while you're doing this, you'll have to make sure letters that aren't the same don't crash into each other or you'll lose health. This can get pretty hectic at times, but it's definitely an improvement over the first game's Hangman's Gambit. The comic strip minigame from the first game has also been altered slightly. Instead of you having all the pieces at the start, you have random pieces of the comic given to you in waves, with one piece always being fake. Once you've used all the pieces that aren't fake, you get the next set. And this time it tells you right away when you've placed the piece in the wrong place, which is nice and a lot quicker than the first game, where you had to sit through the run through every time to see if you were right or wrong. And the last mini game that's been changed ever so slightly is the rhythm mini game. They've in many ways made it a little bit simpler, but it's pretty much the same. But I suck at this mini game, so I don't really care. Along with these changed mini games, they've added a few new ones into the mix. There's a Fruit Ninja type mini game where you have to slice away at the opponent's statements and, like in the argument section, you have to find the right keyword to strike and keep the battle in your favour. To be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of this one, it's a bit fiddly and I get the impression that it would have used the touchscreen on the beta originally, which would have probably made it a little bit more enjoyable, but I don't know for sure. The next new thing is the Logic Dive, which is basically that ring collecting game from Sonic 2 where you're going along a tempest looking road avoiding hazards and answering questions about the case as you go. Each answer is given a fork in the road and you've got to go to the answer you think is correct. Get it wrong and you'll be plummeting to your death. This is probably my favourite of the new mini games as it actually is quite fun sometimes. It can be challenging to keep an eye on the road and the questions and the answers, but that's just a little nitpick. And the final new mini game is The Suspicious Spot. 
where you've got to pick a spot on the crime scene that's relevant to what's going on in the case. And there's also the same dating sim side game that pretty much is the same as it is in the first game. Apart from a few cringy moments in the game, I had pretty much as much fun as I had with the first game, but only slightly less. As I felt, some of the cases weren't as good as in the first game. You could often tell from a mile off who the killer was going to be, and in the first game you'd almost have no clue about who the killer was. But nevertheless, it was still fun and packed with some twists. But if you think you'd enjoy a game that's basically Criminal Minds meets Anime Cluedo, you'll probably enjoy it. But I would urge anybody to give it a go, because I think it's that fun. Anyway, that's it for this review. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.